Chapters 13 through 18 of the First Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Farrar Fenton. The First Book of Samuel, Chapters 13 through 18. Chapter 13. When he had been leader over Israel to the second year, Saul himself selected three regiments from Israel, and two regiments were retained with Saul in Michmash and in the hill of Bethel, and one regiment went with Jonathan to Gibeah of Benjamin. The remainder he sent away to their homes. Jonathan then attacked a garrison of the Philistim who were in Gibeah, and the Philistim heard of it. Saul consequently proclaimed by trumpet to all the country, saying, Let the Hebrews hear! So all Israel heard the news that Saul had defeated a garrison of the Philistim, and the people collected after Saul in Gilgal. The Philistim also prepared for war with Israel, thirty thousand charioteers and six regiments of cavalry, and infantry like sand on the seashore for number, and they advanced and encamped at Michmash to the east of beth Aven. Then the man of Israel saw that there was trouble for them, because the army was cowed, and the people hid themselves in holes and caves and on cliffs and in watch-towers and in bushes. And some flying away crossed over the Jordan to the country of Gad and Gilad. Yet Saul continued in Gilgal, and all his army trembled behind him. So he waited seven days for the arrival of Samuel. But Samuel came not, and the people deserted from him. Saul consequently said, bring me the burnt offering and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. But when he had finished burning the offerings, then Samuel arrived, and Saul went out to ask him for his blessing. Samuel, however, exclaimed, What have you done? And Saul replied, Because I saw that the army was deserting from me, and you did not come to the periodical meeting, and that the Philistim had collected in Michmash, I said, Now the Philistim will come down upon me in Gilgal, and I have not approached the presence of the ever-living. So I forced myself and offered the burnt offering. But Samuel answered Saul, You have acted like a fool. You have not obeyed the command of your ever-living God which he commanded you. But if you had, the ever-living would have fixed the leadership over Israel to you absolutely. But now your leadership shall not be confirmed. The ever-living will seek himself a man after his own heart, and the ever-living will appoint him as leader over his people, because you have not regarded what the ever-living commanded you. Then Samuel arose and went up from Gilgal to Gibeah of Benjamin. Saul, however, mustered what force remained with him, but it was only about six hundred men. Consequently Saul and Jonathan his son, and the force with them, retreated to Gibeah of Benjamin, but the Philistim encamped at Michmash. Thence Philistim plunderers went out from the camp in three divisions. One division turned to the direction of Aphra in the lowlands, and another advanced towards beth Koran, while the third advanced along the borders of the cliffs overlooking the plain of Tseboyim in the desert. At that time a smith was not allowed anywhere in Israel, for the Philistim said, The Hebrews might make themselves swords or spears. Everyone in Israel, therefore, went down to the Philistim to repair his coulter and plowshare, or axe or chisel. But they were allowed files for the coulters and plowshares, and for the three-pronged forks and billhooks, and to sharpen the prickers. Now, however, it was a time of war, yet no sword or spear was found in the hands of all the force who were with Saul and Jonathan, except that Saul and Jonathan his son had procured them. Thus the army of the Philistim had advanced beyond the environs of Michmash. Chapter 14 But one day Jonathan, Saul's son, said to the squire, his armor-bearer, Let us go and pass over to the garrison of the Philistim that is on the other side of Laz, but he did not inform his father, for Saul was posted on the back of the hills, in the caves, the hollows that are in the cliffs, and the force with him was only about six hundred men, with Achaia, ben Achaitub, brother of Ichabod, ben Phinehas, ben Eli, the priest of the ever-living in Shiloh, who carried the ephod. So the force knew not that Jonathan had gone out. Now on the pass by which Jonathan sought to cross over to the garrison of the Philistim, there was a rock projecting into the pass on this side, and a rock projecting on the other side, and the name of the first was Bedsetz, and the name of the other Sana. 
the one projection was from the rock on the north opposite micmash and the other was from the south opposite the hill so jonathan said to the squire who carried his arms let us go and cross over to the garrison of these black guards perhaps the ever-living will help us for there is no difference to the ever-living saving by many or few and his arms-bearer answered him do all that is in your heart i will go with you as your heart desires when jonathan replied you see we wish to pass over to these men and to capture them if therefore they say thus to us keep quiet until we come down to you then we will stand still below and not go up to them but if they say come up to us then we will go up for the ever-living will give them into our hand and that shall be the sign of it to us when the two approached the garrison of the philishtim and the philishtim cried out see the hebrews are coming from the holes where they have hidden themselves and the men of the garrison shouted out to jonathan and his arms-bearer and said to them come up to us and we will teach you something so jonathan said to his squire come up after me for the ever-living has given them into the hand of israel jonathan therefore climbed up on his hands and feet with his squire after him and they fell back before jonathan and his squire as if death followed after them this was a great defeat when jonathan and his squire slew some twenty men in an enclosure of about half an acre of ground there was also a trembling in the camp and in the ground and in all the troops of the army and the plunderers themselves also trembled and there was an earthquake for it was a divine terror the watchmen with saul in gibeah of benjamin also perceived the rumbling with horror and staggered and were as in a dream then saul said to the force with him muster now and ascertain who has gone from us they consequently mustered and did not find jonathan and his squire therefore saul said to abiah approach the ark of god for there was an ark of god in those days with israel and while saul was speaking to the priest a roaring came from the camp of the philishtim and it rolled and rolled and raged then saul said to the priest take away your hand and saul and all the force who were with him cheered and advanced and when they arrived at the camp they saw the sword of each was against his companion in excessive confusion for the hebrews who served formerly with the philishtim had mutinied and joined themselves with the israelites who were with saul and jonathan when all the men of israel who had hidden in mount ephraim heard that the philishtim had fled and were routed they also advanced to the battle for the ever-living rescued israel on that day thus the fighting passed on to beth aven but the men of israel were exhausted by that time saul therefore bound the army saying accursed be the man who eats food before dark and who does not accompany me against my enemies so none of the army tasted food all the country was woodland honey lay openly on the ground and the army came into the wood and saw the honeycomb but no one put his hand to his mouth for the people feared the curse jonathan however had not heard the curse of his father to the army so he extended the end of the club that was in his hand and dipped it into the honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were enlightened but a man from among the forces remarked your father bound the army and said accursed be the man who eats food to-day although the army was exhausted but jonathan answered my father troubles the army look now how my eyes are brightened by tasting this bit of honey indeed why should not the army have eaten to-day of the spoil of its enemies which it found for then would not the defeat of the philishtim have been increased however they fought the philishtim that day from micmash to ilon and the forces were greatly exhausted so the men rushed on the booty and seized sheep and cows and calves and slaughtered them on the ground and they ate with the blood but it was reported to saul look the people are offending the ever-living by eating with the blood and he replied prevent it roll to me at once a big stone then saul added serve out to the men and command every man to bring his bullock to me or his sheep and kill them here and eat without offending the ever-living by eating with the blood so every one brought his bullock along with him that night and slaughtered it there saul also built an altar to the ever-living for he had promised to build an altar to the ever-living then saul said let us follow after the philishtim by night and assail them at dawn of the morning and not leave a man of them and they replied do whatever seems right to you but the priest said you must inquire about that of god saul therefore inquired of god should i follow after the philishtim will you deliver them to the hand of israel 
but he did not answer at that time consequently saul exclaimed let every squadron of the army come here to be examined and show who has offended today for by the life of the lord who has saved israel if it should be jonathan my son he shall be put to death but there was no response from the whole force then he commanded all israel you shall pass as one and i and jonathan my son shall be as one to pass and the army answered saul do what is good in your sight saul therefore said ever living god of israel give a decision then jonathan and saul failed but the army came out consequently saul said cause it to fall between me and my son jonathan and jonathan failed therefore saul said to jonathan tell me what you have done so jonathan told him and said i tasted from the end of the club i had in my hand a little honey and i must die and saul replied god do the same to me and more than this if jonathan is not put to death but the army exclaimed to saul shall jonathan be put to death who has won this great victory for israel tonight as the lord lives not a hair shall fall from his head to the ground for god worked today and thus the army rescued jonathan so he did not die saul consequently went up from following the philistim and the philistim returned to their quarters saul in this way won the leadership over israel and fought around with all his enemies with moab and the benai Ammon, and with edom and with the kings of zobah and with the philistim and whoever stood up against him he conquered he also formed an army and defeated amalek and delivered israel out of the power of its ravages and the sons of saul were jonathan and ishur and malchishua and the names of his two daughters were mirab the eldest and michal the youngest and the name of saul's wife was akinam the daughter of akimatz and the names of the commanders of his armies abiner ben ner uncle of saul and kish the father of saul and ner abai abner ben abael and there was fierce war with the philistim all the time of saul so if saul saw any brave man or any capable man he took him to himself chapter fifteen for samuel had said to saul the ever-living sent me to you to anoint you as a leader over his people israel so now listen to the sound of the words of the ever-living thus says the lord of hosts i remember what amalek did to israel when he placed himself in the path of their going up from the mitzrayim therefore go and assail the amalekites and destroy all belonging to them and you shall not pity over it but kill both man and woman both child and nurse both ox and sheep both camel and ass so saul and the forces obeyed and mustered in telaim two hundred thousand regulars and ten thousand of the men of judah and saul advanced to the city of amalek and fought at the brook then saul said to the kenites go from among the amalekites for fear i should account you as their allies although you showed kindness to all the children of israel on their ascent from the mitzrayim the kenites accordingly departed from the amalekites then saul conquered amalek from kavilah to the passage of the wall which is along the border of the mitzrayim he also captured agag the king of amalek alive but he destroyed all the army by the edge of the sword saul and the forces however spared agag and the best of the sheep and cattle and wethers and fat lambs and all that was good and were not willing to destroy them but they destroyed all the worthless and poor cattle consequently a message came from the ever-living to samuel to say it grieves me that i appointed saul as leader for he has turned from following me and he does not stand by my command but it hurt samuel and he cried to the ever-living all night samuel however got up in the morning to meet saul for it had been reported to samuel that saul had come to carmel and fixed a garrison for himself then turned aside and had gone to gilgal and when samuel came to saul saul said to him give thanks i have stood by the command of the ever-living but samuel replied then what is this bleeding of sheep in my ears and the lowing of cattle which i hear and saul answered they come from the amalekites since the army spared the best of the sheep and cattle for the purpose of sacrificing to your ever-living god but we destroyed the rest samuel however exclaimed to saul stop 
and I will tell you what the ever-living said to me last night. And he replied, Tell it. So Samuel said, Were you not little in your own eyes, you head of the tribes of Israel, when the ever-living anointed you to be leader over Israel? And the ever-living sent you on a journey and said, Go and destroy those sinners the Amalekites and fight with them to destruction. Now why have you not listened to the voice of the ever-living? You have pounced upon the plunder and done wrong in the sight of the ever-living. But Saul replied to Samuel, I did listen to the voice of the ever-living, and went on the journey the ever-living sent me, and I have brought Agag the king of Amalek, but I have destroyed the Amalekites. The army, however, made prize of the best sheep and cattle to be devoted as a sacrifice to your ever-living God in Gilgal. Samuel, however, said to Saul, Is it more pleasing to the ever-living to have offerings and sacrifices than to listen to the voice of the Lord? Look! To listen is better than sacrifice, and to obey than the fat of rams. For the result of your idea is rebellion, and delusion, and stubborn idolatry. You have repudiated the command of the ever-living, and he repudiates you from being leader. Then Saul exclaimed to Samuel, I have sinned, because I have passed by the command of the ever-living, and your command. But I feared the army, and I listened to their voice. Yet now I pray you to pardon my fault, and come along with me, and I will humble myself to the ever-living. But Samuel answered Saul, I will not go with you, for you repudiated the command of the ever-living, so the ever-living has repudiated you from being leader over Israel. Then Samuel turned to go, but he seized him by the hood of his cloak, and it tore. And Samuel exclaimed, the ever-living has torn the leadership of Israel from off you today, and has given it to your neighbor, a better than you. He who presides over Israel does not lie and does not alter, for he is not a man that he should alter. Still he replied, I have sinned, yet honor me in the presence of the officers of my army, and in the presence of Israel, and come along with me, and I will bow to your ever-living God. Samuel consequently went with Saul, and Saul bowed to the ever-living. Samuel afterward said, Bring Agag the king of Amalek to me. And Agag advanced tottering to him, and Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death has passed. But Samuel answered, As your sword has made women childless, so your mother shall be childless among women. Then Samuel hewed Agag to pieces before the ever-living in Gilgal. Samuel afterwards went to Ramath, and Saul went up to his house at Gibeah of Saul, and Samuel ceased to visit Saul to the day of his death, for Samuel was grieved at Saul, and the ever-living was sorry for the rule of Saul over Israel. Chapter 16 The ever-living consequently said to Samuel, How long will you grieve about Saul, although I have rejected him from the leadership over Israel? fill your horn with oil and go i send you to jesai of bethlehem for i have selected a leader for myself from among his sons but samuel replied if i go and saul hears he will murder me the ever-living however answered take an heifer from the herd with you and say i have come to sacrifice to the ever-living and invite jesai to the sacrifice when i will instruct you what to do then anoint for me whoever i tell you Samuel accordingly did what the ever-living told him, and went to Bethlehem, and the magistrate of the town came to meet him, and asked, Do you come with peace? And he replied, With peace! I have come to sacrifice to the ever-living. Purify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. Let Jesai and his sons also purify themselves. Thus he invited them to the sacrifice, and when they came he looked on Eliab, and thought, ah he must be consecrated before the ever-living but the ever-living said do not bend to look at his great stature for i reject him for what a man does not see because a man looks with his eyes but the ever-living looks with his heart then jesai called abinadab and passed him before the face of samuel when he said him also the ever-living does not choose then jesai passed seven of his sons before samuel when Samuel said to Jesai, The ever-living has not chosen any of these, but, Samuel asked of Jesai, Are these all your lads? And he replied, 
all except the youngest, and he is shepherding with the sheep. Samuel, however, said to Jesai, Send, and bring him, for I will not dine until he comes here. So he sent and brought him, and he was ruddy with handsome eyes and beautiful to look at. Then the ever-living said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Samuel therefore took the horn of oil and consecrated him in preference to his brothers, and the spirit of the ever-living came upon David from that day forward. Samuel afterwards arose and returned to Ramath. The spirit of the ever-living then went away from Saul, and he was terrified by an evil spirit away from the Lord. The ministers of Saul consequently said to him, now that the spirit of god has gone an evil spirit terrifies you let our lord then command your personal servants to seek a man skilful in playing on the harp and when the evil spirit from god is upon you he can play with his hand and ease you saul consequently replied to his ministers look out then for me a man with proficiency in music and bring him to me i have seen a son of jesai of bethlehem a skilful musician a fine dancer a gentleman and a good reciter and a handsome man and the ever-living is with him saul therefore sent messengers to jesai and said send your son david who goes with the flock to me so jesai put on an ass bread and a skin of wine with a kid of the goats and sent them by the hand of his son david to saul when David came to Saul and was presented to him, he admired him greatly, and he became one of his attendants. And Saul sent to Jesai to say, Let David attend me, for he has found favor in my sight. When therefore the Spirit from God came upon Saul, David took his harp and played with his hand, and relieved Saul and soothed him, so that the evil spirit went from him. Chapter 17 but the Philistim assembled in their camps for war. They advanced to Sukkah, which is in Judah, and were encamped between Sukkah and Azkah in Aphes Damim. Saul and the Israelites also collected and encamped on the plain of Hala, and they prepared for battle at the challenge of the Philistim. But the Philistim occupied the hill beyond, with the veil between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistim a man, one of the twins, whose name was Goliath of Gath, his height was six cubits and a half. A brass helmet was on his head, and he was clothed in a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass, with brass greaves on his legs, and brazen javelins at his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the spike of his spear weighed six hundred shekels of iron. A shield-bearer marched in front of him. Thus he stood and called from a distance to the regiments of Israel, and said to them, why do you come out arrayed for battle am not i a philistim and you slaves of saul choose a man for yourselves and let him come to me if he is able to fight me and beat me then we will be your slaves but if i overpower him and beat him then you shall be slaves for us the philistine also said i defy all the regiments of israel today Give me a man that we may fight together. Ha, <laughs> ha, ha. And Saul and all Israel listened to these words of the Philistine, and were depressed and terribly afraid. A man of Ephthra, of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesai, had eight sons, one of them David. And the man in the days of Saul was looked on as a great man by the people. The three elder sons of Jesai had gone and marched with Saul to the war, Eliab the eldest, and the second Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest, so the three elder marched after Saul, for David had returned and left attending Saul to shepherd the flock of his father at Bethlehem. The Philistine had thus approached and stationed himself morning and afternoon for forty days, when Jesai said to David his son, Take now for your brothers an ephah of this oatmeal and these ten cakes, and run to the camp to your brothers. Present also these ten rolls of butter to the colonel of the regiment, and wish your brothers health, and take their returns. Saul and all the army of Israel were then on the plain of Hala, at war with the Philistim. David consequently arose at dawn, and entrusted the flock to the keeper, and started, and went as Jesai had ordered, and came to the wagon station, when the forces were going out in battle array, and were cheering for the fight. 
both Israel and the Philistine were arrayed for fight, ready for the challenge. So David entrusted the baggage he had brought with him to the care of the baggage guard, and ran to the ranks, and went and wished his brother's health. And while he was in talk with them, he saw the champion of the Philistine, named Goliath of Gath, approach from the side of the Philistine, and saw what he did. And David listened. But all the Israelites were afraid of the man, and fled before him in great terror. And a soldier of Israel was saying to the lookers-on, Do you see this man who is coming up there, who comes up to defy Israel? But should a man be able to defeat him, the king will enrich him with great wealth, and give him his daughter, and make his father's family tax-free in Israel. So David asked of the men who stood around him, Say, what will be done to the man who defeats that Philistine, and removes his insults from Israel? For who is this Philistine blackguard who defies the armies of the living God? When the people replied to him to this effect, saying, Thus it will be done to the man who defeats him. But Eliab his elder brother listened to his talking with the men, and Eliab was furious with David, and exclaimed, For what have you come down here? And to whom have you entrusted those few sheep in the desert? I know your pride and the bravado of your heart. You have come for the sake of seeing the battle. David, however, answered, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? And he turned from beside him, and went a little backward, and asked to the same effect. And the people returned him word for word as at first. But the inquiries that David made were heard, and were reported to Saul, and he had him fetched. David said to Saul, Let no man's heart drop because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. But Saul replied to David, <laughs> you are not fit to go against this philistine to fight with him for you are a lad and he has been a man of war from his youth david however answered saul your servant was a shepherd of the flock to his father and a lion came and a bear and carried off some of the flock but i went out after them and beat them and delivered them from their mouth then they leaped upon me but i seized them by the mane and beat and killed them your servant beat both the lion and the bear, and it will be with this filthy Philistine the same as with them, for he defies the regiments of the living God, and, David added, the ever-living who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear can deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Then Saul said to David, Go, and the ever-living be with you. And Saul clothed David in his own armor and put a helmet of brass on his head, clad him in a coat of mail, and girt David with a sword from his own arms. Then he tried to walk, but he was not able. David therefore said to Saul, I am not able to walk in these, for I have never been used to them. Consequently David stripped them off him, took his sling in his hand, and chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook, and put them into a shepherd's bag that he had. So with the sling and staff in his hand he approached the Philistine. The Philistine also himself marched and advanced against David, with the man carrying a big shield in front of him. But when the Philistine bent forward and saw David, he despised him, for he was a lad and ruddy with a beautiful face. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog, that you come to me with sticks? <laughs> then the Philistine cursed David by his god. The Philistine also exclaimed to David, <laughs> Come to me, and I will give your carcass to the fowls of the sky and to the beasts of the field. <laughs> but David replied to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spears and in armor, but I come against you with the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the regiments of Israel, whom you have defied. The Lord will shut you up today for my hand, and I will beat you and cut off your head and give the carcass of the champion of the Philistine today to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, and all the world shall know that there is a God for Israel, and all the crowd shall recognize that the ever-living saves neither by sword or spears, for the Lord controls the war and will give you into our hands. Then the Philistine braced himself up and advanced to challenge David. But David was quick and ran from the ranks to attack the Philistine. And thrusting his hand into his bag, David took out a stone and slung it, and hit the Philistine on the forehead, and the stone entered his forehead, and he fell on his face to the ground. Thus David was victorious over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. 
but there was no sword in david's hand so david ran and stood by the philistine and seized his sword and drew it from his sheath and killed him and cut his head off with it when the philistine saw that their hero was dead they fled then the generals of israel and judah arose and cheered and pursued the philistine to the end of the valley and to the gates of akron and the wounded of the philistine fell on the road of the double gates both of gath and akron then the israelites returned from the pursuit after the philistine and plundered their camp david ultimately took the head of the philistine and brought it to the house of peace and placed his armor in the hall but saul watching david going to challenge the philistine said to abner the commander of his army whose son is that lad abner and abner answered by your soul's life leader if i know then the leader said inquire yourself whose son the youth is so when david returned from defeating the philistine abner took him before saul the head of the philistine being in his hand and saul asked him whose son are you my lad david replied the son of your servant jessi of bethlehem chapter eighteen and as he finished speaking with saul the soul of jonathan was knit to the soul of david and jonathan admired him like his own self saul also took to him at that time and would not permit him to return to his father's house then jonathan and david made a treaty to love each other as their own life and jonathan took off the cloak that he had on him and put it upon david with his armor and sword and bow and belt and david went wherever saul sent him and was successful and pleasing to saul above all the officers of the army and he was delightful in the eyes of all the people and also in the eyes of the ministers of saul it happened however that once when david was returning from defeating the philistim that women came out from all the towns of israel with song and dances to meet king saul with tambourines tom-toms and triangles when the women answered to the music and sung saul has defeated his thousands and david his ten thousands but saul was very angry and the refrain was hateful in his ears so he exclaimed they have given the ten thousands to david and the thousands to me what is there more for him except the leadership saul consequently became irritable with david from that time forward then some time after the evil spirit from god seized upon saul as he was walking through his palace and david was playing on his harp as he did daily and saul had javelins in his hand so saul threw javelins exclaiming i will pin david to the wall but david escaped them twice then saul became frightened at the presence of david for the ever-living had come to him and gone away from saul therefore saul removed him from near himself and appointed him colonel of a regiment and he went out and came in with the forces david however went on his way successfully for the ever-living was with him and saul saw that he was very successful and was afraid of him for all israel and judah admired david for he went out and came back before them saul consequently said to david you know my elder daughter mirab i will give her to you for a wife and you shall become my most powerful son and fight the battles of the ever-living but saul intended not that he should become powerful but that he might be brought into the power of the philistim david however replied to saul who am i and what is the clan of my father in israel that i should become son-in-law to the chieftain but when the time came for giving mirab saul's daughter to david she was given in marriage to adriel the Mecholathite. but michal saul's daughter loved david and told it to saul and it seemed right in his opinion so saul said i will promise her to him and she shall be a trap for him that he may be got into the hands of the philistim saul therefore said to david a second time you shall be my son-in-law now saul also ordered his ministers to speak to david privately and say the leader is now your friend and all his ministers like you so now become son-in-law to the chieftain therefore the ministers of saul whispered their ideas to david but david replied is it a little matter in your sight to be son-in-law to the leader when i am a common and ordinary man so his ministers reported to saul himself how david had replied to the matter saul accordingly answered say this to david the leader does not care for a dowry but wishes for a hundred foreskins of the philistim as a revenge on the king's enemies but saul was plotting to throw david into the hands of the philistim 
his ministers therefore reported this speech to david and the idea to be son-in-law to the chieftain was capital in david's view but the opportunity did not arrive therefore david prepared and marched he and his men and killed two hundred persons of the philishtim and david brought their foreskins thus satisfying the leader and thus justifying his being made his son-in-law saul then gave him michal his daughter as a wife saul also saw and acknowledged that the ever-living was with david and that michal his daughter loved him saul however still continued to be afraid of david and saul was an enemy to david all the time when the philistine generals advanced david's strategy was more skillful against them than that of any of the officers of saul so his name became famous the end of chapters thirteen through eighteen of the first book of samuel recording by mark penfold